With a variety of widths, back sweep and up sweep, and riser heights, I'm not surprised if you feel paralyzed with indecision about a new set of handlebars, but don't worry, I'm going to go into detail about each of those things so that you feel more confident choosing in the future. So handlebar rise is the measurement from the center of the stem to virtually the center of the grips. So how high up those grips are relative to the stem. Now for cross country, you generally see zero to 20 mil rise typically. And like I've got on my pure XC race bike here, it's a zero rise. So often flat bars like this. Nino Scherter, uh, XC legend, has been known to run a negative rise in his handlebars of up to minus 40. Now, I will say that he has a one-piece cockpit, uh, very similar to mine here, and I should imagine, or I can only imagine, that he's trying to emulate a minus 40 stem, which doesn't really exist on the market, and it's certainly hard to come by. So the negative rise is much like as if it would have a minus 40 stem with flat bars. Now, the reason XC riders favor this lower rise is because it puts your weight more over the front of the bike. So this is favoring a more of a climbing position. So your body is more centralized when the bike is pointing upwards. And the reason they want this is so that you've got more traction on that front wheel. It's better controlling the bike when you're climbing through technical ascents. And also if you're climbing climbing anything steep, you won't feel like you're kind of falling off the back or popping wheelies or having a wandering front wheel. If you had bars that are too high in XC, you might feel like you don't have control over the front wheel in steep or technical climbs. So you might want to go for a lower rise if you have a rise in your bars. Um, but if you have a zero rise bar and your hips are rocking forwards, maybe you're getting back ache, uh, then it's potential that your bars are too low and you might want to experiment with a higher rise. So 20 to 25 millimeters is pretty commonplace for a rise on a trail or an enduro bike. Now this is because it gives you a slightly more upright position, which is good for long rides, for comfort, but it's also confidence during a descent. So these bikes will favor descending, having a higher front end will put you more centralized on the bike when the bike is pointing downwards. It'll also give you a bit of a feeling of being behind the bike as well. If you feel like when you're doing technical climbs on your trail bike that the front end is wandering a little, or if you feel like your front end wants to wash out in corners, it might be that your handlebars are a little too high and you're not getting enough weight over the front. 30 to 40 millimeter rise is usually reserved for downhill bikes, although we have seen it as a bit of a trend on enduro and certainly super enduro bikes. But I would say that's reserved for riders who are riding really steep terrain as it's further correcting that tilt of the bike as it goes down the hill and keeps the rider position central. I often hear people say that they prefer a certain amount of rise, but if you're switching from a 26 inch bike or a 27.5 and going up to a 29er, or if you're increasing your suspension travel or going for longer forks, for example, then consider that your front end might actually be as much as 20 mils higher than your old bike. If you wanna get an idea of higher or lower rise bars, you can actually just move your stem up and down on the steerer tube if you've got enough room and spaces to do so. Now, this will give you a general feeling, but it does have a slightly different effect in that the stem will be moving up and back along a steerer tube and down and forward along a steerer tube. So it may also affect the reach only slightly. 
So up sweep is that angle in which the ends of the handlebars goes up around about where your grips are. And the degree is from an imaginary flat line through the center of your stem. So a five degree up sweep is five degrees from level. An up sweep will turn your wrists and force your elbows to come out and up. So this is often favored by aggressive riders. Trail and enduro will have a slightly bigger up sweep so that you can ride in a more aggressive position. Although you might find it quite exhausting if you don't naturally ride like that. Equally, that's why you don't tend to find much of a big up sweep on XC bikes. Now, if you think you've got too much up sweep in your handlebars, you might be able to roll your handlebars either forwards or backwards to try and get more of a leveled or a more aggressive up sweep, just to try that on for size. Also, don't forget that if you're riding on a hardtail, when you sit on your bike and you sag into your front suspension, your whole bike will pivot forwards. So that means your handlebars will pivot and roll forward too. So when when you're setting up a hardtail, consider that you might need to roll your handlebars slightly backwards in order to accommodate for that sag. Now this isn't really a riding style or a riding genre thing, this is literally personal preference or I should say ergonomics because that back sweep is relative to each individual. It is there to accommodate how your wrists fall naturally when you hold your arms out onto the handlebars. If you have a back sweep or an up sweep that is too aggressive for your natural riding position then you can get wrist ache, elbow ache or even shoulder ache from that. Most handlebars, be that for XC or for Enduro, will have a seven to nine degree back sweep. And I think that's just because it's pretty commonplace for most humans to require that amount of back sweep. Now, it is possible to get 12 to 16 degrees of back sweep, which is quite aggressive. But the best thing to do is to hold out a pair of grips just loosely perhaps up to a piece of paper and get your friend to mark either end and see if you can work out what angle your hand naturally falls at if you want a completely custom feel. Handlebar width can loosely be categorized by riding genre, but there is a healthy dose of height and shoulder width of the rider, as well as just personal preference to be considered in that. XC riders tend to be on the narrow end of the scale with about 680 to 640 being the average. And the reason they favor the narrower bars is because it gives you a sharper steering feel so that they can be quicker and nippier through single track. And it also creates a nice strong frame with your upper body so that they can be nice and powerful when they're climbing up hills, particularly if they're out of the saddle. Downhill and super enduro tends to be on the wider end of the handlebar width scale. And that is because a wider handlebar will give you a lot more leverage, certainly in the corners. It might give you more control on the descents and it will be easier to deflect any front wheel movements as they go down technical terrain. Trail and enduro bikes quite rightly sit somewhere in the middle, but it also depends. When we looked at Enduro World Series riders, we saw that most of them were running something like 740 to 760 mil bars up in Inner Lethen for that race. But that was largely due to them weaving through tight trees and single track. Whereas when they were racing on more bike park style courses, like Whistler, for example, then they were running bigger bars. So I guess the conclusion is it all depends. Even if you have a bar width that suits your shoulders and your height, then you might still want to alter it for the kind of terrain that you're riding. A couple of tips that may help you start off with a good width for you is to do what I call the blind test, which is when you sit on your bike, close your eyes and put your hands out on the handlebars and see where they naturally fall. 
The other way is to do a press up and get in a nice stable position and get a friend to measure your handlebar width from that position. And that's just a good starting point, but you will need to play around with things as time goes on. Carbon fiber handlebars can be a lot lighter for the same strength rating as aluminium. It can also be laid up to alter the flexibility, strength and weight of a handlebar. Now, this complexity obviously comes at a bit of a price and carbon fibre is more expensive than aluminium tubing. And it also means that you will need a proper respiratory mask and a decent carbon cutting blade if you're going to be cutting down the handlebars yourself, something you don't technically need if you're cutting down aluminium bars. Aluminium bars can be made to have a little bit of flex, but also stiffness isn't everything with carbon. Sometimes aluminium will offer better damping qualities over the stiffness of carbon, which can be favored by enduro, downhill and trail riders. Diameter refers to the width effectively of this part of the handlebar in the center, which goes onto the stem. Now 31.8 is pretty much an industry standard at the moment, uh, but for trail and enduro and downhill, you can get 35 millimeters. Uh, this is often seen with bikes that favor that super boost hub as well. So if bigger is better for you, then absolutely fine, but do make sure you're checking that the diameter matches the stem that you have. So as you can see, even one rider like myself can have a variety of bar widths, sweeps and rises across different bikes and different genres. So the key is not to copy your friends or to copy the pros, it's to work out what's best for you and never stop experimenting really. So do give us a big old thumbs up if you found this useful and subscribe if you're new to the channel.